HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Whether you're buying a new car or used one, it's a big investment, which is why you should choose Pennzoil Platinum. It helps extend the life of your engine and protect it up to 15 years or 500,000 miles, whichever comes first, guaranteed. That's because Pennzoil's base oil is made from natural gas and 99.5% free from engine clogging impurities. The proof is in the Pennzoil. Enrollment required. Keep your receipts. Other conditions apply. See Pennzoil.com slash warranty for full details. Find it at Firestone Complete Auto Care. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash business growth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to gain recognition as a great resource for small business owners, business leaders of all stripes, aspiring entrepreneurs, and sales professionals. And this is because of the guests who join me. These are folks with expertise in certain areas of business, and they share that expertise with you so that you can get the stuff you need and do better things in your business. Today, my guest is Alex Membrio. Starting in a 10 by 10 living room, Alex grew Cardinal into an Inc. 5000 company for three years in a row. When he's not leading the fastest growing agency in the Southeast, Alex can usually be found at a variety of speaking engagements. He also enjoys giving back to young entrepreneurs who are ready to take on the world. Thanks so much for joining me today, Alex. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is a blast. I am thrilled to have you here. We're talking about marketing and uh, it, I find that small business owners are, are really challenged with marketing. They don't know how to do it themselves or want to do it themselves, but they also are a little hinky about hiring an agency because they, it, it's the kind of thing that, that is sort of um, intangible, let's say. So what would you suggest – like, what are things they should look for when they're looking to hire an agency? Yeah, that's a great question, Diane. So, 
Uh, one of the most important things to look for is with anything else, prior experience in their field, right? And so if you're in healthcare, you want to try to find someone with experience working in the medical field, financial services, a lot of these very, very regulated industries, you want to find somebody that's worked in your field to understand regulations, things like how to avoid HIPAA violations by not transferring personally identifiable information in the wrong way. So those kind of very regulated industries, and we work a lot in healthcare, so we're aware of it. You kind of want to find somebody that's worked in it before so you keep yourself out of trouble. For a lot of small businesses, though, that aren't heavily regulated, you may not find someone who's done a lot of roofing digital marketing if you're a roofer, but you want to find somebody that's worked with a lot of similar home services type businesses, right? And if they haven't done home services, you need to start looking at other things. And questions that get asked of us that I think are very smart questions are, who am I going to be working with on your team? What access to other resources am I going to get? What kind of reporting and data and analysis am I going to get on, on a monthly basis? How often are we going to be talking? All those things are very important. Um, people get caught in a trap when they're hiring agencies. They get pitched uh, by, a, by the A-team, right? The A-team comes out and pitches you and they woo you and you get really excited about it. But you're not going to probably work with the A-team, especially if your billings aren't A billings, right? And so... Uh, making sure to ask that team that's pitching you. And sometimes even if you're working with a small business marketing agency, you're getting pitched by the owner, but you're going to get put with interns. Same thing with big agencies. A lot of times they're going to put you with uh, interns or junior account managers, junior media people. And that's a big, big issue uh, that people run into after they've been sold. Um, so I would say asking for the team, checking the experience on the agency, very, very important. Yeah, boy, that's a hugely good question. Wow. Okay. Well, you know, when it comes to this whole measurement thing, um, what should they be measuring or, mm -hmm. or what should the owner be paying attention to as far as measurement um, to determine whether they're actually getting what they are paying for? Yeah, absolutely. So at the end of the day, it comes down to sales and it's easy for an e-commerce business to, measure that, right? I gave you 10 grand for paid search advertising and Amazon advertising. And how much in sales did you make? Did you get me six to one ROI? Cause that are co covered my cost of goods sold. That gets me the net that I need more difficult on the lead gen, on the lead gen business, a roofer, an accountant, a doctor, a lawyer, right? So yeah. what we are working on is technology that helps our clients, especially in the medical industry, understand how the media dollars invested translated into actual patients driven. Uh, for, more, for most businesses, it's how did the media dollars I gave to the agency or SEO dollars or whatnot, how many leads were driven? They can easily tell you that. They put call and email tracking on your site and they tell you how many leads. But oftentimes there's a huge gap because the business owner will say, I spent this amount of money. You're telling me how many leads I got, but I don't feel a lift in business. And that is a huge gap that we were hearing for the last decade since I, we started Cardinal. And we said, we've got to put an end to this. There's got to be a way to be able to tell our clients how many sales they got from the leads driven. And that is the big trend happening right now, at least in data focused agencies like us. But I will tell you, if you're currently working with an agency, I want you to go to them and I want you to say, I'm tired of you telling me just how many leads I got for the spend I gave you. I want us to start tracking how many customers were driven through those leads. Even if it takes me manually recording whether Jim and Sally actually converted into a client every month. Yeah, boy. No kidding. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. ugh. And it's not that hard for the agency. They have to set up tracking on your email forms, those lead forms that you get, and those magical lead. We all love seeing those. And they have to set up tracking on the calls, but the agency or your SEO or PPC contract or whatever you're working with can easily send you every month a report, a spreadsheet, and we do it for our clients. And we say, Jim and Sally and Andrew and all these people submitted lead form who became a client. And then you look through your own CRM or your own email records of who wow. became a customer. And then you send it back to the agency. And then they say, this is the total tabulation. We sent you 10 leads and three became customers. Those three customers uh, each purchased $10,000 in whatever from you based on what you're telling us. So your return on investment is X. It's very doable. It just yeah. takes annual work. Yeah, don't let these agencies hose you anymore, guys. It's, it's easy to make, make them accountable. And yet, I mean, that's why I'm so glad we're having this conversation because I can't tell you the numbers of conversations I've sat in on with my clients listening to the marketing agency 
talk around the subject <laughs> and never really get to the point. Yeah, it's because it takes a crap ton of time to set up that kind of tracking. And wow. then it takes an account manager that's really experienced every month to like send the man send the spreadsheet and do the manual matchbacks. It takes a lot of time. Agencies don't want to do it. And oftentimes if they have junior people on there, they don't want to see that the you know, they don't want you to see that the results aren't great. Uh, that's so, what I think it is. Yeah, that's yeah. what's happening. And yeah. you know, business owners, more than marketers, if you get senior marketers at bigger companies and more sophisticated, they know how to set some of this stuff up. But business owners, oftentimes, I've, you know, we have to run to the next fire that we're putting out. Somebody just quit. I've got to go on LinkedIn and poach somebody new. They're yeah. not like as focused on what my marketing is returning. But at the same token, if you want to know how your business is moving and you want to hold that agency accountable, you're going to have to start spending more time asking for these results. So the business owners need to, you know, not just go on a feeling and yell at their agency because they don't feel an uptick in results. You got to work with them, bring this advice that we just went through and yeah. have them work. And if they can't deliver that to you, you got to move to a different marketing company. Okay. All right. So, which this brings me then to the question about budget because this is the other thing that, that I think happens with small businesses. They, um, they, they really have no idea what their budget should be and they feel like it costs way too much. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how do they figure that out? The first thing I want them to start with is an understanding of what their real timeline on potential return on investment is. You know, I okay. get too many requests from potential clients that say, Hey, we're looking for SEO. Okay, great. And then we get down the pike and in, in the pipe, sorry, we get down into the pitching and things like that. And they say, all right, great. So how long is this going to take? And we say, well, you know, you should plan on SEO taking a year or two. And I say, whoa, you know, I was expecting to do something like six months. And the first thing we need to understand about how much budget you're going to put in is guys, there's no marketing that you're going to do that. You're going to find out what is working in six months, right? Not, not really. Um, even running paid search ad campaigns or Facebook ad campaigns, you're talking really four or five months before you have statistically relevant data uh, for you to act on. So you can't judge a marketing agency in less than a year. You need to give them a year to see how things work out. And I see business owners make this mistake a lot. They go to the next guy with the biggest basement. Oh, that wasn't working out. I'm going to go to the two person shop now. Now I'm going to do that. You know, like they don't give yeah. time because they're too cheap because they're, window of opportunity on when they feel like things should be working is too short. So the first thing I'd advise is you got to look at this long term. The second thing I'd advise is really understand your customer lifetime value. Don't go on what you should spend on advertising based on the first purchase of a customer from your business, because that's, <laughs> that's not the actual return, right? If yeah. we find a roofer, well, a roofer is probably not a good example because uh, it's really something you only purchase every 15 years, but most businesses will have repeat uh, repeat clients, right? The doctor's going to see somebody multiple times. Uh, the lawyer may work on an ongoing contract basis with who, whoever they bring on. And so look at your customer lifetime value. What's a client worth? And then you can start to say, go back to your agency and say, clients worth 20 grand to be my net on that's 30%. I really don't want to spend any more than 10%. Let's spend two grand to make sure that we get good leads in here that close. That gives your agency something to work from. And then you can work with the agency to determine overall marketing budget. Really slow growth companies will budget eh, two, 3% of their total revenue in marketing. If you want to go high growth, five, 10% is the top end of what I've seen. Um, and that will, you know, that should yield a lot of growth. Sometimes some things we're going to need to start looking at sales and marketing are becoming really intertwined. So how do you split that between the two is right more complicated question I don't have the answer to, but it's something that CEOs and business leaders are now having to look at um, how much to budget between the two of them because they right. go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other anymore. Exactly. I know. Interesting. All right. I'm going to take a quick sponsor break and then, <clears throat> excuse me, I have some more questions for you. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. And if you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash business growth, you get one free audiobook and a one month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are The Inside Track by Peter Sage and The Irresistible Consultant's Guide to Winning Clients by David A. Fields. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth, explore the books that are of interest to you, 
and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Today we're speaking with Alex Membrio about marketing, which is this huge topic. And Alex was doing a great job of giving us some really specific information. I love this because this is so helpful for the small business owner who does is not a marketer, does not know this stuff, and yet needs to be out there doing it. So one of my questions for you, Alex, is uh, when it comes to digital marketing, how, how is there a way for a business owner to know what kind of digital marketing they mm -hmm. should be doing? Yeah. Yeah, great question. We get a lot of inquiries from business owners, CEOs, mm -hmm. and they're asking for social media posts because someone said that social media is really important. Yeah. Um, and it is, uh, but something to remember if you're a small business, social media is great, but it's more like a billboard, right? It's it's like push advertising. So you're driving down the street and you see the billboard. Like we don't really know if you wanted to see that billboard. And that's what social media advertising is. It's just a much more honed in version of that. I can pick you based on the kind of car you drive and what you look like inside of that car and how old you are and things like that. But at the end of the day, it's a billboard. And so for a lot of SMBs, I would really suggest not falling down the social media trap of making posts and boosting posts and putting things on Twitter. You guys need leads. That's what small businesses need. And typically the best way to find leads is to go where people are actually actively asking for your business information, right? And so that used to be the yellow pages. We used to be able to go to yellow pages and look for a personal injury attorney and yeah. they would scan the list of them and they would call them. Now the yellow pages is Google, right? And so people go to Google and they, they actively ask to find a personal injury attorney or a, or a primary care physician. And so we want to make sure that when people are raising their hand like that, we're showing up on Google. And so, there's a couple different ways you can show up on Google and those ads that show up at the top or, or the organic listings. Don't listen to what anyone said. SEO is definitely not dead. It still drives the majority of traffic for, for our clients and generates the best long-term results. Uh, but showing up on Google is absolutely number one. If you're a B2C businesses, business, your reviews are 1A uh, right behind showing up on Google. Got to make sure that when people are choosing between you and someone else that your reviews look phenomenal, not just on Google, but on Yelp and City Search, et cetera. Uh, if you're B2B, this answer is a little different. Um, I've seen a lot of B2B businesses where SEO works. Uh, I've seen some where it doesn't. I've seen paid search fail a lot in B2, for B2B businesses yeah. um, because it's a longer sales cycle and paid search ads typically are a much quicker hitting thing. Um, and so I, I'd be careful with paid search. Don't lean on that organic and SEO, creating great content and ranking for that much more important. And something else, Diane, is very important for my B2Bers out there uh, is, is to make sure that you're being really well promoted on, on LinkedIn. And I do not mean from your corporate page. I mean from your personal page. If you're the CEO or business owner putting out really great content that builds your network and gets you visibility, you'll be amazed at how many leads you drive just from showing up on people's newsfeed and reminding them that you exist. I th thank you so much for that. I, I completely, I get it. I th and thank you for saying not on their business page. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, th this is an argument that goes on all the time when I am at these events and or I'm sitting on a panel or something and it's, well, you need to make sure that you're posting from your business page. It's like, okay, is anybody going to those business pages? <laughs> No, and they don't show up on people's feed because LinkedIn wants to prioritize. In their algorithm, they really care about the peer-to-peer -peer networking and video is really big right now. So you kind of have to like study the algorithm to see what's showing up in your feed a lot. It's somewhat prioritized, but you'll see the things that are getting lots of likes, comments, and shares are typically the things like th that LinkedIn is prioritizing in their algorithm. Currently, it's any post that does not leave LinkedIn uh, so some kind of question or a statement that you made, but don't link out and then, uh, videos, they want to become like a video, you know, it's a big advertising play for them to generate. Yeah. So the videos helps keep people on the platform. They're trying to compete with YouTube, et cetera. Um, so posting that kind of stuff, but you see people like Gary V, et cetera, that have done really well with the promotion of their brand. They, he predominantly did it through like posting on LinkedIn and social media, but LinkedIn, he, uh, has I hate to use his own term, but he's crushed it on LinkedIn and you may or may not like him. You know, he's, he, he has his qualities, but one thing I'll tell you 
is that he's very good at promotion on LinkedIn. So if you want someone to like model yourself after, uh, go look at him. And I will tell you, we've driven a number of deals over the last, uh, since early 2018, when I started posting my own articles and things like that on LinkedIn, um, just from people in my network that I already knew emailing me several months later and saying, Hey, I really like that post that you made. It shows how creative you guys are. Let's re-engage and do another project together. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it, it's so interesting for me because B2B I think really is about credibility and having the opportunity to share your knowledge so that people get an opportunity to get used to you and get, and, and they want to go to the expert. They want to interact with the people who are, they can tell, know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what better way of doing it? Yeah. And you know what I found is actually kind of interesting and counterintuitive is when you're posting things on LinkedIn, they actually don't even have to pertain to your field of interest or what you provide clients. Like um, oftentimes I don't, po I don't post about marketing. I have a podcast and sometimes I'll post interviews I have and things like that. But that's not what I get the emails or the inquiries from uh, people about. It's like, hey, I love that campaign you ran to try to get Amazon to your city. Or I uh, love how you talked about firing that client and how you guys have cardinal rules of engagement and things like It's always like business stuff. Oh, like, that's interesting. Yeah. So you don't have to post about whatever. If you're an accountant, don't post about accountant. That shit is boring anyways. Right. Uh, you can post about just general tips and things like that. Make sure you're commenting on other people's posts as well because you show up in people's feed when you do that. Uh, but yeah, it just make sure it's something you're really passionate about. Uh, that's all you have to do. It doesn't have to be on topic. Well, that makes so much sense to me because if you think about who the audience is, the audience cares about more than whatever it is you do. Mm -hmm. So if you're engaging with them, if you're engaging on other topics, if you know that's something they're going to then want to have a conversation with you about and then... Mm -hmm. You're building that relationship with them. That that's interest. That makes total sense to me. Yep, absolutely. And you'll find that like one out of five of your posts will be on your own topic of interest or, or on your field of expertise, and and that's fine. It eventually reminds people like what you actually are an expert in. But mm -hmm. showing up is the name of the game on LinkedIn. You see all these like twenty three year old uh, entrepreneurs, or you know they're just getting started out. You know what they are great at? They're great at knowing how to promote themselves on LinkedIn and. Uh, <laughs> And it's great. You don't need to go to networking events anymore, or at least not as much, because this is really where it's happening. And uh, I love that because I hustling around with little kids and stuff to networking events was tough. So now that we can do it online, yeah, I would say that the thing to get over though is like writing an article and putting yourself out there for negative comments, yeah. a bunch of negative comments. It can hurt your feelings for a while. Putting a video of yourself on there talking to a camera, it's super weird. So you have to get over it. You really do have to get over it. And I will share that I have a client who for years I was saying to her, you really need to be doing video. You really need to be showing people how to do this. You could be, and she'd say, I'm not getting in front of a camera. Absolutely not. And then I don't know, she, like she, lightning bolt. She says, you know, she does um, lash extensions. She says, you know, these people just aren't cleaning their lashes well. And I said, okay, what, how about if every day you show them how to clean lash, like do yours and mm -hmm. how much longer this brilliant so every morning no makeup fresh out of bed she's getting in front of a camera in her bathroom okay. and and cleaning her lashes and she's been doing it for she was going to do a two-week regimen she did it for two weeks and now she wants to do all these other videos because she realized it didn't kill her <laughs> that's great yeah because they post the first video and then she sees that she got a bunch of comments and likes and yeah. things like that. she's like all right cool yeah yeah, yeah. It's tough to jump over it, but you put those lashes out there, it might just work. I'll tell you what, it's a great thing, and <laughs> it just people want to get to know you. How much more authentic can you be? Then? Yeah, I was thinking about doing this series that would be uh, uh, called Entrepreneur Real and show like the real side of running a business, like so all the terrible stuff that we go through on a day-to-day -day business because there's all of this stuff out there that's like being a CEO is great starting business is awesome and you're crushing it and making tons of money it's like no dude you're actually the last one paid slash not paid usually and people are threatening to leave you and you got to pay them more all the time and clients are firing you like let's show that uh, but anyways I, I got to get around to getting someone to film all that fun stuff yeah 
just put a camera up and just hit record and go on about your business. <laughs> go on, client. Go on, client. No, fire me again. I want. I want to get. Yeah. This. <laughs> I didn't get it quite right. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Okay, now. I, I'm curious about what also what business owners need to be looking out for because now we have this whole artificial intelligence thing that's taken over the world, mm -hmm. um, and I, I think you know there's value in it for marketing. But but talk to me about what we need to keep an eye out for and or get ahead of or some combination mm -hmm. thereof. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to hear a lot about this stuff. Uh, AI, really, I mean, AI, robotics, business intelligence, BI, machine learning, kind of all sending into a lot of this stuff. But uh, it is going to be uh, huge in the next 20 years. And it's already started to take off. And what we're going to see, especially in marketing, is that you're going to see AI not only deliver you um, dashboards and things like that and tell you how many, cust how many of those leads became customers because you integrated Salesforce with Google AdWords. Like, that's where we're at right now. Right, we get things integrated, but what we're going to see AI start to do is not only deliver us the stats, but it's also going to deliver predictive insights in the next five years. So, it'll show you which campaigns are driving leads and potentially sales. But not only is it going to do that in the future, because we're already doing that in the future, it's going to say if you do this to this campaign, you will yield two x more leads potentially. And you know what, Alex, I just went ahead and already did it for you. Um, so that you're going to see a lot of that kind of stuff happening, especially from all my marketers out there, business owners, maybe you don't care about that as much. Um, but what you're going to care about is you're going to hear a lot of marketing agencies telling you, Hey, we need to do things for voice search and, and other robotics type things like that. Um, what I will tell you is if you, you are in B2B, it's highly unlikely that someone's going to find your services from talking into a phone. I still think for the next five, 10 years, we're going to be going to computers and looking for things. So I don't think AI is going to have a big, big role to play there, at least for the next half decade. If you're in B2C, uh, AI is something you're going to need to pay attention to. If you're in urgent care, I would bet my bottom dollar that in the next five years, I'm going to be able to say, hey, Alexa, uh, please book my son an appointment at the urgent care down the street. And she's going to say, okay, I just did it. Um, so I think that's coming and that's something we need to pay attention to if you're in B2C, especially something highly, uh, consumer driven and kind of low consideration. Um, and so that's something we need to pay attention to for, but for a lot of B2B out there, don't worry about it from a marketing perspective. I don't think it's going to be huge. It's going to be more for marketers, but if you are in B2B, I want you guys to start developing your own platforms with predictive insights to help your own operations. Uh, and it's something that can help set you apart in a sales process as well, that you have a specific technology that helps you analyze data better or it delivers a better uh, system and result more consistently. Everybody's going to be using technologies, technology as a differentiator in the next 10 years. If you don't develop your own, you're going to be in trouble, in my opinion. I might be wrong. That's really interesting. So can you give me an idea of like what that looks like? I mean, if somebody's listening to it and thinking, okay, but what, what, how do I take technology and integrate it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'll give you our, our uh, positioning at least. So to me, you know, we are w really well positioned in healthcare marketing. We serve a lot of medical groups, tons of case studies, and our people have tons of experience in it. But at the end of the day, another healthcare marketing agency could pitch you and, uh, you know, it seems pretty similar. Your people are all very nice, just like theirs, and everyone has lots of experience. In my opinion, the only thing that can really help you stand out is a piece of technology that no one else has. And so that's why we've developed something called Patient Stream, and it helps do something no one else can do. I can't give a lot of, for instance, it's like, I, I mean, we were, we were working with an outbound lead gen uh, 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 program, and they were pitching us, and the thing he kept coming back to me and saying, hey, listen, we aren't like most outbound lead gen programs. We have a specific technology that helps onboard our people faster and helps the repeatable process move smoother. And nobody else has this technology. I don't know how much of this is BS, but you're going to start hearing this time and time again, right? And so I think it's, you know, develop your differentiator. I don't know what it can be for a lot of people out there. You've got to find your own niche. But what I'll tell you, if you're in B2B and you're pitching against another company, like even if you have industry ex expertise, there's going to be at least five other companies that are very similar to you. So yeah. if you want to be the only one, it gives you a lot more price elasticity. You can charge whatever the heck you want if you're the only one with technology. And something really fun, Diane, is the technology can be the inroads to getting the services client. 
And so you pitch in your platform, they use it for whatever small amount, and then you say, hey, listen, to stay on the platform, you got to use me for my other services, the more lucrative part. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I get that. I think we're going to see a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that because, boy, differentiating, I agree. It's got to be something that makes whatever it is you're doing more valuable for the client. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Wow. This is so interesting. I, I cannot begin to tell you how much I appreciate this information. And I know the listeners do too, because you answered so many questions that I know they're all sitting out there having. Mm -hmm. So um, will you tell them about Cardinal and, you know, how, and uh, how they can find you and about your podcast and stuff, what you got going yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so this was a pleasure. I like talking about the future. My wife gets so tired of it because I always talk about the future at home. And she's like, oh, God, here we go. Another future conversation. Um, so it's, it, this is really fun for me and talking about technology and how it integrates. And I love helping small business or businesses avoid hiring the wrong marketing companies. I started Cardinal because my dad did just that. He went with the guys that were all action-based and promised a whole bunch of stuff. And then you got the C team and they didn't know what they were doing and it wasn't results-based. So that's why we started Cardinal. We're a full service digital marketing agency, really specialized in SEO and paid search based in Atlanta. 60% of our book of business is in the medical field, uh, but we work across industries um, and we're more of a boutique agency. I like to say we're not a big agency. We're a good one. So you only get A players with Cardinal. You won't get shoved in a stack of, clients there's no junior anything here uh, so it's a really fun time if you want to find us go to uh, google and type in cardinal digital marketing or uh, healthcare marketing agency or anything like that we're usually as we should be top of search results for just about any keyword we're targeting right um, and so you can read more about us there and if we haven't turned you off at that point feel free to reach out and we'll make sure we respond promptly that's terrific thank you and and listeners boy you know what We've got some great information here. Uh, check them out, but you know, and also listen to this again so that you can hear all of those tips and, and ideas of things that you need to be looking at. Marketing seat, it doesn't have to be that weird monster that lives under the bed that you're totally afraid of. So <laughs> <laughs> embrace it. It's a good thing. Yeah. Right? So, and I like to thank our sponsor uh, to get a free trial of audible.com and a free audiobook. Go to audibletrial.com slash business growth to sign up. As always, uh, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Welcome, change agents, to your go to place for stories that ignite your spirit, fuel your purpose, and connect us all. We believe in the incredible power of the human spirit, its boundless resilience, and the inspiration it brings to our lives. On the Driving Change podcast, we'll journey together through the extraordinary yet very relatable experiences of some of the most amazing people on earth. Our mission? That through these stories, we might just spark change within you and awaken a newfound motivation to harness your unique gifts to make a real difference in the world. So get ready to be inspired and join us on this incredible adventure. You can find the Driving Change Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you love listening to your favorite podcasts.